Okay, getting started with ZB using the Java client. Best place to start from is zb.io, the website. Um, we'll go to docs. So we go to the docs, let's have a look at install. So the easiest, most recommended way to use ZB is with Docker. So you're gonna need to have Docker installed on your machine. Uh, let's do that now. So you go to docker.com, if you don't already have Docker installed, click on get started. Come on down to download desktop and take a tutorial. So you can, you know, follow the Docker documentation for that and, uh, you know, watch a tutorial video about it if you need to. So using Docker, now we're going to open the ZB Docker Compose repository. Let's go to the main page of it. Clone or download, copy the link. Let's go over here. We're in a scratch directory. Oh, let's get rid of everything that's already in here. So we'll start from nothing. Goodbye. Okay, clear. LS, nothing. Here we go. So we're going to git clone the ZB Docker Compose repository onto my local machine. So obviously you're going to need git installed on your machine. It's coming on down. And what this ZB Docker Compose directory uh, repository contains is a bunch of different profiles for running ZB uh, brokers and different kind of configurations using Docker. So they're repeatable, consistent, reproducible environments. That's what Docker gives you. So while that's coming down, we are going to scroll on down here to section 8 of the Getting Started Guide, the ZB Java Client. Let's go to Get Started. So here's what we're going to do, and here are some of the prerequisites. We don't, we do need Java 8, yep. We need Apache Maven to be installed on the machine, so you can get that from here. Apache Maven is like a build manager, package manager for Java. Um, we're going to use Docker Compose. The modeler we need to get, so let's go over here. The ZB modeler, 061. Uh, if you're on a Mac, Linux, or Windows, you grab the package you need. So that's a graphical uh, editor for BPMN files. I've already got it on my machine, so I'm not going to grab that now. And we don't need to grab the monitor because we're going to be using Docker Compose. So let's have a look at what we got. LS, CD into ZB Docker Compose got a bunch of different kind of profiles that we can use uh, okay so let's just leave this one sitting here we'll open a new terminal for this next part okay uh, I should set it up to open always from the current directory that'd be easy let's have a look scratch good good let's copy this maven command we're gonna paste it in here uh, this is something that I struggled with a little bit you got to put these backslashes on the end of these lines and I did try adding this to the documentation but then when I cut and pasted it out of the docs it didn't work must add some invisible character or something so add the backslashes or put it all on one line execute order 66 here it goes so it's gonna scaffold up a basic kind of project for us and install uh, you know a couple of dependencies done let's have a look okay we got a ZB get started Java client directory let's CD into that uh, get started okay and then I'm gonna open my IDE I use IntelliJ um, enable Google format why not Google Java format okay we're in let's have a look so here we have our pom.xml file it's kind of like the the manifest if you like of the uh, of the project uh, uh, let's go to the browser what do we do next add the ZB client library as a dependency to the project pom.xml file so we'll grab this go back to IntelliJ and we'll add it into the dependencies section as a codependency save that and enable it auto import so you can see down here it's resolving dependencies gonna pull it in but the ZB version here we need to update current version at the time I make this video is 0 18 zero snapshot let's grab that save resolving it's pulling stuff down while it does that we'll go back here it's kind of like a cooking show create a main class and add the following lines to bootstrap the ZB client I'm just gonna copy the whole thing paste it let's have a look we'll go back source main Java IOZB app okay um, yep replace everything Okay, uh, static interface method calls are not supported at language level 5, so let's change it to language level 8, so we can get lambdas and type annotations and static interface methods. 
Okay, that looks good. Got another error here. What's this say? Class application is public. Should be declared in a file named application.java. Our file is called app.java. Let's do this. App. Okay, that got that to red line to go away. Run the program. If you use an IDE, you can execute the main class. Otherwise, you must build an executable jar file with Maven and execute it. See the GitHub repository and how to do this. Okay, yeah, I did find this before. You got to get the Maven shade plugin. Uh, uh, create a fat jar file. Let's go with this one. May Maven shade. Okay, here we go. Here it is. Maven shade plugin. I'm gonna grab this little piece here. Copy that. Go back to my POM file. Now, plugins, plugins, here we go. I'm gonna add it as a plugin. And I need to change one thing in here, which is the main class. So we change the main class to be io.zb.app. Save that. Okay, so oh, I should add zb to my uh, spelling directory. Save. Okay, so I'll open a terminal. And now that I've added that, I should be able to do maven package. Package. Maven package. So this is going to package it up, uh, download the kind of dependencies for it, package it, it's built. So that'll be in the target directory. And here it is here, zb get started client 1.0 snapshot jar. So to run it, I'm just going to go java minus jar target and that thing. Okay, uh, connected and closed. Hmm, interesting. Wonder why it said connected when there's actually no broker running. Let's get the broker running in the background. <clears throat> okay, that's real easy to do. We go back to the Docker Compose that we checked out before. Now, for this demonstration, we're going to use uh, the version of the broker with Simple Monitor. So if you have a look here, there's one here called Simple Monitor. We're going to use that. So I CD into Simple Monitor. And then I just simply, oh, let me show you what's in here. So LS, there's a Docker Compose file. We'll lolcat that out. Docker Compose, it's got a bunch of things. It's got an H2 database container. It's got a ZB broker container and it has the ZB monitor container. It's going to start three containers. So in here, we run the command docker compose up. Now on your machine it will take a little bit longer the first time you run it because it will need to pull the images from Docker Hub but I already have them on my machine so it's just going to start straight up. So it's starting those three containers all together. Here they go through their boot sequence, bootstrapping all the things. A bunch of errors come out of the, the ZB monitor the first time that it starts but then uh, the Docker daemon restarts the container again and what that is is that the broker is creating some tables in the h2 container and the first time the monitor starts those tables are not there so it freaks out and then it restarts itself and then by the time it starts the second time the tables are there and it looks good okay let's test that it's working hey so if we go here we can get rid of a bunch of these things and yeah we'll create a new one from nothing keep it nice and clean so if we go to localhost and go to port 8082 we got a ZB simple monitor this gives us a way to kind of inspect the the internal state of the broker it's not the actual internal state of the broker the ZB broker is kind of like a Bentley engine it's like a, a black box they seal it they stick it in the car and it just works uh, the way the simple monitor works is the the records uh, in the ZB broker are exported and they go into the H2 database and then the ZB simple monitor web app reads the uh, H2 database to tell you basically what happened rather than what is happening Subtle distinction, but uh, it gets important when you're running at really high throughputs. Okay, we've got a simple monitor running. We've got a broker running. Mm, and let's go on to the next part. Let's see what comes after that. Uh, uh, now we want to go back to this Microsoft Edge browser that i got running here. Okay. So what we've done here, we'll go back to the IDE actually and take a look at the code. Goodbye, POM. Here we go. So we created a ZB client. We use the client builder. So the Java API uses like a builder pattern. It's very flexible. It's very powerful. Uh, it lets you do a lot of different things, which is really cool. And all we do here is we just print connected and then we close the client connection. Okay, let's go back and see what's next. 
connected model a workflow okay so let's model a workflow so we're going to use the ZB modeler which I downloaded earlier and here it is this is where you create your business process modeling notation diagrams click to start here's a start event now we're going to copy the one from the actual uh, official demo order placed to order delivered okay so we'll double click on this and we'll say order placed can I make this bigger and bigger where'd it go yeah that's cool okay good order placed to order delivered that's it okay so add an end event and then we put here order delivered okay this is like the to-do list app of BPMN e-commerce kind of orders um, well, maybe not even e-commerce they could be physical ones so deploy a workflow now we want to deploy the modeled workflow to the broker okay so we should save it save the diagram in the projects source folder okay so save um, oh hang on let me see what should it be called here we go order process BPMN so we'll copy this name it's gonna follow it as closely as possible scratch here we go and we're in the Java ZB get started and I'm not really sure actually where I'm supposed to save it but I'm just gonna save it somewhere order process is that what it's called order process yep save okay I saved it now let's see what happens next now we're gonna deploy it okay after the client is connected let's just copy and paste the code because that's what all the champions do built an entire career on it um, okay connected paste the code in boom press the magic button to import the class it's there so we create a new deploy command we are let me add that to my spelling dictionary creating this deploy command adding a resource from the class path sending it and so uh, this is a this returns like an asynchronous it's an asynchronous event and it returns a future and then you can force it to be synchronous by calling this join method on it okay um, I'm gonna do this I'm gonna add a configuration drag that into view and then add one it's an application Oh, what happened? <clears throat> Here it is. Main class iozb.class zb.app. That's the name of the class. Yep. Okay. Can I change the name? Yep. Let's just say run. Okay. Run. Okay. Let's try running it like that. Run. Something's happening down here. Building, parsing, build. Here we go. Okay, it blew up. Let's have a look. Exception in the main thread cannot deploy resource from class path order process dot bpmn from the class path. Mm, is that the class path? I don't know. Let's try moving it there and see what happens. Okay, let's try running it again. Run. No, didn't like it. Uh, do I need to shade the order process bpmn into the jar? Mm, I don't know maybe you need to add it to the POM okay too hard um, let me just drag it back here here's one thing that I know that I can do and this kinda gives you a sense of how powerful and flexible this Java API is so you see here that we're doing a new deploy command and we're adding a resource from the class path what we can do instead is we can add a resource file and then I just go like this okay let's try running that and see what happens connected workflow deployed version 1 victory awesome okay uh, if you're a Java programmer you're probably going you numpty this is how you do the uh, class path I got no idea but you can do it this way too so you can also do resource streams you can do um, I'll show you here we go dot add resource from class path a file byte stream string string UTF-8 there's a bunch of different ways that you can do it possibilities are endless okay that worked um, let's have a look at our simple monitor if we have a look at workflows in here you can see now we have this workflow oh what a dumb name I'm gonna change that I don't like it here's the workflow key and there it is it's been deployed we'll go back here let's go back to the ZB modeler and we're gonna change the name of the process let's make it something way cooler than that we'll call it order process and we'll give it a human readable name here called order process yeah save that okay let's try running our little program again run it's gonna redeploy and its workflow 
version 1 because we gave it a new name so it is technically a different workflow so if I now refresh my simple monitor you can see here in begin auto process there it is that's pretty cool it's exactly the same good okay back to here yep create a workflow instance so we're going to create an instance of the deployed workflow so here's the code after the workflow is deployed we copy the code and then uh, deployed yep and then like a professional developer we paste it save okay and then magic key to get the class to come in yep all good so we create a workflow instance event so we take our client that we created earlier connecting to the to the broker create a new create instance command then we use the build pattern uh, the builder interface a BPM process ID auto process get the latest version send it and then join it to make it synchronous and then from that workflow instance that's returned we then get the workflow instance key and then we print it out hey I created a new instance let's run it and see what happens run connected workflow deployed it's another version workflow instance created and there's the key let's have a look at simple monitor and see what we can see simple monitor instances here we go there's our workflow instance uh, click on it there it is you can see that it, there is zero there, zero there, one is completed, one is completed. It's done. It's finished. Why does it say cancel instance? I'm not sure. It should be finished. Let's try that. No, what happens if I click cancel instance? Nothing. Okay, disabled maybe. Okay, next step in the tutorial. Okay, back to here. Run the program, verify that the workflow instance created. You should see the output workflow instance created. Key 6, it wasn't key 6. If you have a look at that key that it actually created on it, it's pretty long. Uh, okay, back here. You did it. You want to see the workflow instance? Yeah, we did that thing. Work on a job. Okay, now we want to do some work within the workflow. So we've got to add a few service jobs to the BPMN diagram, set the required attributes. Okay, so let's do that. Go back to the ZB modeler and we're going to add some workflow instances. So I'm going to break this connection here. I'm going to move my order delivered over here and I'm going to add some service tasks. There we go. How many are there in the demo? Let's have a look. One, two, three. Collect the money, fetch the items, ship the parcel. Three of them. Okay, pretty straightforward. And then connect that one to there. Okay, so here we uh, collect the money. And this is the best practice for naming these service tasks. It's like a verb object. Collect the money, fetch the items, and then ship the product. Ship it. Ship the product. Okay, cool. Set the type of each task. Uh, set the type of the first task to payment service. Okay, collect money. This is going to be task type payment service. So this is the, you know, the microservice that's going to service this task. Give it three retries, why not? And this is the instance name. So, I don't know, payment service task one. Uh, task one. Save that. Okay. Save it, switch back to the main class, and then add the following lines to create a job worker for the first jobs type. Okay, so after the workflow instance is created, copy and paste waiting for the jobs close the worker let's do it go back to the IDE workflow instance created paste that in import the class done okay so we create a new job worker um, we take our client that we created earlier and then say new worker job type payment service and here's the handler the handler is a, a lambda it's like a callback function it takes a job client and a job and then the business logic of your microservice goes inside here. So there's not a whole lot of business logic in this one. It's just going to print, hey, I'm collecting the money. Um, I'm going to make that a little bit kind of funky. I'm collecting the money. I'm collecting the money. And then we'll put um, dollars. Uh, job, client, new complete command. So once the once the the worker is uh, finished with whatever side effects that it needs to, to do, or whatever transformations. Uh, it, it creates a new complete command. 
it, it gets the job key and then sends it back to the broker and says I'm done with this one here it is sends it back okay and then once we've constructed that worker then we call open on it and it's going to start the worker so let's run that run connected and then boom stack trace let's see what did we do here uh, must have exactly one ZB task definition extension element okay so I think that what's happened here is we've tried to deploy the um, the BPMN diagram and it's freaking out because these need to have types as well fetch items payment service no oh, okay so um, what would this be fetch a service yeah uh, fetch a service why not fetch your service we'll give them three retries as well three and then shipping service shipping service and then we'll give that one three retries okay good and we'll save that and then let's try running it again and see what it does this time it likes it workflow deployed workflow instance created there's a key and then it closed so uh, let's do this let's not close it save that and then run it again and see what happens so our job worker will stay alive and working oh look at that so the first instance we created the first time round uh, was sitting there in the broker and this worker has collected the money for it and then it's collected the money for the second instance that just got created cool pretty straightforward um, next run the program verify the jobs process see this output yep and then have a look at the ZB monitor so let's do that we'll go back to the browser browser and then the simple monitor instances okay we've got a few of them one's completed and two of them are active let's have a look at them yeah look at that we collected the money we're now waiting to fetch the items so let's go back to our instructions okay what's next work with data okay usually a workflow is more than just tasks There's also a data flow be pretty boring if there was no way to pass any kind of state around so the way state works in ZB is that there's like a payload or a state the key value pairs in the form of what we call variables and they can be set when the workflow instance is created so that's what we're going to do we're going to create a workflow instance with an order ID and some order items so to do that looks like we're going to mutate this uh, workflow instance event where we create the workflow so uh, I'm just gonna copy and paste it and we're actually changing the job worker as well but let's do this uh, creation of the workflow instance first so here we just created a workflow instance straight up now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a little bit before that where we construct this payload to send not that one let's go alt enter yep bring it in do it yeah that one good and a hash map so it's a hash map of type string object uh, and then we just put the variables into it and set you know the values here put we put the put the key value pairs into the hash map and then we pass the hash map in as the variables for the workflow instance okay and our job worker similarly we're going to change that so we're going to pull the variables as a map out of the job in the handler so I'll grab this handler here oh, we also have to tell it to fetch those variables mm -mm. Let's see it's actually two things going on here which is kind of cool let's make sure I'm grabbing the right part yep so we go down to our worker handler and paste that okay extra line there that we don't need save I'm a master at cutting and pasting years of stack overflow um, okay so what we're doing here is we in our handler we get the job and we get the variables as a map out of the job and then from the variables map we're going to get the order ID now oh, lost that cool thing there that's okay uh, so the other thing that we're doing here is that what we're doing with the worker is we're saying that this this microservice here this little micro worker it should fetch only the order ID variables by default it'll it'll fetch all of the variables or the whole state of the workflow all at once but you can here constrain which ones it's going to get and so we're only interested in the order ID here so that's what we're going to ask for let's see what happens when we run it um, I got to stop the other one from running because I you know I got rid of the job worker close and the client close so the the process will just keep running forever in a loop checking for more work 
connected okay here we go deployed created an instance processed this order and collected the monies good now what um, go back to your simple monitor and take a look okay let's have a look go back to the instances maybe we got like one two three there are three customers we've taken their money we haven't shipped anything to them what are we gonna do about this see that the variable total price is set oh yeah let's have a look at that okay so um, back to the instances let's have a look at the is this the latest one this is the latest one here and then have a look at fetch items collect money workflow instance I'll look at this okay well oh, look here the here are the variables the total price the order ID and the order items so if we go back to here nope that's just the global state of the workflow right now can't get it at points in time oh here we go show history what does that do Mm, interesting okay so if we have a look at the worker what it's done is it's got the variables as a map it got an order ID and you know we printed out hey this is the order ID process order that's here and then what we've done is we've put a new variable into that that into those variables and then we've passed that into the complete command so we actually updated the state so when we collected the money I guess this microservice is also calculating the total price so um, really you would uh, probably have that here calculate price because it got set in here it didn't get passed in here which would probably mean you'd need to know which items were being bought but whatever for the purposes of illustration don't use this in production to run your e-commerce store what's next you finish this tutorial you learned the basic usage of the Java client okay that was it whole thing um, let's do the rest of it why not okay so we're gonna fetch the items okay um, oh this is gonna be fun okay we're gonna grab this cut and paste there we go paste it in we need to change the name let's call this one um, what is this guy called this is the payment no this is the fetcher service we called it fetcher service right okay and why don't you like this? It's never used. Mmm, it's a true story. True story. And this one? Duplicate code. Yeah, okay, they are exactly the same thing. Um, so we'll change this here. This is now the fetcher service. Good. Fetcher service, this first job worker will change his name. This one is the payment service, right? Payment microservice. Okay. What are you complaining about? Duplicate code. What is this? Is this like like plagiarism kind of detection or something? Um, what is it trying to tell me? I should dry out my code? Uh, okay, so for the fetcher service, we really need to know what items the that they're that they're going to buy, that they want. Which items are we fetching? So if we go back to where we created this workflow instance, we said order items, right? So let's go down here and we're going to grab the order items out of the state yep okay uh, we also have the total price but we probably don't want to do anything with that so let's see process that order yep get the order ID and then here we should say fetch the items fetch items that was enough to break the duplicate detection okay a new hash map we're gonna put those things in there but um, we're going to process the order and then let's oh man this is going to really test my skills because we need now need to get this uh, arrays as a list so where did we create it up here arrays as list so we got a list of IDs here you know what I'm going to do I'm going to go full ghetto and just do this variables dot get and it's order items I wonder what this will do. Um, I hope it's got a good to string method on it. Okay, we don't need to calculate the price anymore. We collected the money. We fetched the items. You know, we don't actually need to update anything in the state. So we'll take that out. Oh, we just take out that whole variables line then, hey? Don't need it. Okay. 
of course you'd do some kind of side effects out of these things like you'd have to like uh, I don't know access a database or a rest interface or a robot to go and get them out of the factory let's see if that runs um, stop the currently running one because our workers are just sitting there waiting for, for work and then run this new version run press the play button connected da, 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 process order null Ooh, okay so yeah we forgot to fetch the variables now you know what if we just take out that whole fetch variables line there and then stop it it's gonna by default fetch all of the variables from the engine so we'll do another run we should see it a single order go through yeah look at that process order 31243 we collected the money process the order yeah and then we're fetching these items cool you know um, we're processing this order we should say how much money we're collecting we should say how much money we're collecting um, total price so okay we'll do it like a, what is that a float a double I don't know it's a number um, is it a float maybe it's float let's see float price 46.50 it's a double okay um, cast it to a float no uh, migrate it to a double okay so here we're gonna say we're gonna put the price in there and then collect money and then we'll say that's how much money we're collecting and then we got the fetcher service and then let's create another service at the end which is the shipping service okay so um, shipping service shipping service we'll call it the shipping service shipping service client worker job type handler get the variables got the order ID we've got the order items and then you know um, ship it to production and then we do that um, okay so we should say ship item stop the currently running one and then run okay connected da, da, da. oh man we shipped all the items at once we're shipping to production look at that everything got shipped let's have a look at the simple monitor to see what's happening in there simple monitor now oh look at that workflow instance has changed refresh shipped it's gone uh, if we go to instances I say that they will be shipped yep they're all completed everybody's got their orders happy customers happy customers or repeat customer hopefully uh, okay let's stop running this and let's just take another look at the code so what we've got here is an entire e-commerce system that can be massively scaled you can take on Amazon with this um, in just a single class amazing you of course you wouldn't build your actual production code like this but this is just a demo to give you a sense of how this works so we created three little microservices in here these little workers that work independently of each other and they can be scaled independently and what they do is they fetch the the jobs of this particular task type and uh, you know perform the business logic function in here and then post back the results to the broker so we have three services we've got a payment service we've got a fetcher service and we got a shipping service and so there you have it that is how easy it is to get started with ZB using the Java client we had a look at how we build a business process uh, using the ZB modeler um, we started the whole thing using the docker compose so we got like a simple monitor and a broker up and running we had the ability to inspect running workflows interact with them even uh, you know you can even modify them from here cancel them you can even you can even you can even if you go to workflows and we'll go to the latest version of the order process workflow you can even create a new instance right here in the simple monitor which is super handy for debugging don't run this in production with simple monitor because it's very slow but it's just a great tool for doing development with so there you have it getting started with ZB and the Java client it's that easy